off the cooler but it should shut off in a minute so while I'm scraping out the Krausen ring off of these tanks and from where the bitter came out it is quite a quite a bit of Krausen in here I just want to address a couple of misconceptions I noticed in the comments yesterday one of them was uh, to do with the finings and the other one was to do with how long the beers have been in the tanks I know you didn't see the first batch of beer come out of the tanks that's because I had to borrow some casks for that so I didn't put that on the camera so this batch that you saw me cask yesterday and the day before was actually Guile 5 and Guile 6 and these had been brewed on the 26th, 27th of July so they'd not been in the tanks for six uh, weeks as I think somebody commented on and also regard to fining the beers, uh, not fining, priming, priming the beers. Most cask producers don't prime their beers because we have pretty quick turnaround of about two to three weeks in primary and there are usually enough complex carbohydrates left behind in the beer, maltodextrins and the like, to provide some background conditioning and some continued activity in the cask once it's been packaged. If you do prime and you have not hit terminal gravity completely then you risk the uh, scenario of exploding casks which no publican wants in their pub. And you've got to remember we're not carbonating the cask beer per se as what you might expect to be doing with a keg beer but in fact where conditioning the beer so just like you might have your beer cold crashed to four five degrees and let it mature for a month in the in the corny keg or whatever you do at home it's a very similar thing we're letting the beer mature let its de flavors develop and any of that residual fermentation that happens will create uh, one or two volumes of co2 in the cask and also the fact that we're packaging so a blow 8 degrees C, the beer already contains quite a lot of dissolved carbon dioxide and that's enough to create the conditioning in your glass when you serve it on the bar, these two effects combined. So no I don't prime, I've seen it done by American brewers before but I'm yet to see a professional uh, cask ale producer prime cask. I've not seen it happen before. So that's just a little bit of a roundup. Again with the finings, there are lots of other types of findings out there. Uh, the findings adjunct I use in the tank to give me clarification. Then there's uh, Isinglass which I use in the cask. The findings adjunct is vegan friendly, the Isinglass isn't. And then there's one called Brow Salt which is a substitute for um, auxiliary findings and isinglass I believe but these, this brow sole doesn't stand up so well uh, to being disturbed once it's settled out whereas isinglass you can roll the cask seven, eight, ten times and it'll still have that effect of condensing the sediment bed at the bottom of the cask I mean not so much of a problem these days in the days of hazy beers but we have quite a lot of drinkers who are, uh, they drink with their eyes and 
particularly for things like the best bitter, it's extremely important to have a polished beer. You can get away with it more on the hoppy IPAs. I don't mind drinking hazy beers, I think uh, you can sometimes strip a bit of the character out, but that's no excuse for really murky, muddy beers. I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, you know, the race to make the most opaque, murkiest, milkshake kind of beer, not for me. Uh, I think it takes away from the quality ingredients that you're putting in. So, Brota style, traditional uh, English bitters, want to be polished. American New England IPAs, yeah, get away with a bit of haziness. Crash, bash, lash, ah, maybe next time after the next wine. Try to dream it all, dream it all away. I don't know how, even keep it going. Screaming every night until the morning. Wake up early in the summer groaning. My body's freezing as it starts snowing. The Midwest ain't the best for a nice rest. When you're falling on your face and you break your chest. Wow, child, trying to survive. But the winter, no, the winter ain't mild. You might say that you're pushing yourself down. And you're the only man standing in your way. And then you probably say you're drinking yourself drown. But don't you know it's your body that will pay? And I could say that you're crazy and a liar too. But in the back of my mind, I know the truth, I've had it, fanatic, I'm basically an addict, pulling apart my heart, it's problematic. <laughs> Try to dream it all, dream it all away. Well, I could say live or die. I can only say that I'll try. Well, I could say life or death. But I know it'd be a waste of breath. Deep in my blood, beating out through love. All of you manage that chicken? Of course you can. So the plan today was to uh, actually crack on with some more of the cellar. But Stu brought back all this equipment from uh, Sheffield today. So we had the uh, glass washer and these three fridges. And this glass washer turns out to be X display, which ain't really a bad thing, is it? But it's got a couple of things wrong with it. So I had to take the C panel out and uh, play about with a couple of solenoids on there and some connections have come loose and then, not solenoids, relays, and then the solenoid on the back here that supplies the water to the unit seems to be playing up a little bit and we do have a spare and I've tried it with the spare and the same thing happened so I'm guessing it must be the programming so we're just waiting for this temperature to get up to the top that light should go out, then it should work there's no guarantee it will though All right, chaps. So we're finally at home. I'm just watching uh, Tom Hardy and Deliverance on the TV box. Shows you if you're in the UK what time I finished dicking around with all this kind of stuff. Basically, quarter past eleven. 
and I've still not signed out on the vlog. So I've put together an order from um, a steel company, uh, but I'm going to ring another one up, ACS, ASC Metals, see if I can get a better price on them tomorrow for a load of angle iron steel and all that kind of stuff to help build the bar. I found a company online that does bar taps. They're not the Perlix or the Inter Taps, but uh, they're a bit more, they're called the Elegance Taps. So they're in between. I can pick these up for, they include shank and everything you need. Quick disconnect on the back. I think about 45 quid a pop. But paying a lot more for the Perlix or the Inter Taps once you've put the shank and the uh, barb connector and everything on the back. So we'll see, we'll see, I've not ordered that yet. And then I also spent a little bit of time drawing out a plan, a uh, bird's eye view for the bar. So you can kind of get a vision of exactly what it is I want to achieve with the layout. So everything's on there if you want to pause the video and have a look. We're going to have an 18 line python, so I've got room for 18 keg taps of course, but we'll just get rid of 1, 2, or 17 and 18 and we'll run 14 for now, I don't need all of those. The same with the cask, I'm not going to put 10 on, I'm going to put 8 on, but we've got a 10 line python. So we'll just get rid of 5 and 6, open that gap in the middle. But it's getting late folks, I've got a very busy day tomorrow, I've got the kids as well, which is always difficult to manoeuvre. Uh, so I want to get this vlog edited and uploaded so you can enjoy I don't even know what I've got for the vlog to be honest you've already seen it was it any good leave me a comment I don't know yet anyway we'll do another one tomorrow I'll see you then my problems pass into a flood one more bartender one more please I got a whole lot of pain to drink out of me ah!